Hello guys, welcome to how to create footnotes. I'm going to be just kind of reviewing the basic process of how to, you can create a footnote on a Google Doc and just what they're all about and why we use them. Um, this is only for essays, and so if you're in the essay category for National History Day, it should only be for you. So if you are in any of the other groups, you need to leave here right now because you do not need this information. Um, so footnotes are basically another way to cite, uh, cite sources. So if you're an essay, you already have to do an annotated bibliography, but you also have to do footnotes. Footnotes are just really good ways to show people that you know how to do your research and you know what you're doing. So we're going to go ahead and kind of tear into this, and I'm going to kind of show you these basics, okay? So right here, you see where it says how to create footnotes in the Google Classroom. I'm not sure why I said Google Classroom. It's like Google Docs. Haha, fix it. All right, so... First, I'm going to show you what a footnote looks like, just so you have a, a basic idea of what I'm talking about. Um, this is an essay that I wrote a while back. This is part of my master's thesis, so I'm going to scroll down. All right, so you should be able to see it now. Um, these little things down here, these are footnotes. I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit so you can see just a bit better. Very slowly. Here we go. So you can kind of see how this line right here gets created. Don't worry, this actually will automatically get created once I show you how to do um, footnotes are really easy once you like know how to do them, so don't feel like you're going to have to do a bunch of formatting and things like that. Um, once you learn the basics, it actually becomes very simple. So, you can kind of see right here from the start, it's, like, it's a little tiny number one, and you see this little tiny number two, three, four, and five. So this tells me on page one, I have five footnotes, and so I actually need to go through this, and I need to make sure that all five of these footnotes are in here. Um, so I'll just look through, I'm reading, 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 here's the first one. So this right here, I'm going to read the sentence, says, In 1982, President Ronald Reagan began plans for what became known as the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. So here's the deal. You use a footnote when you have given a piece of information that needs to either be better explained or needs to have a source to back it up. So when I'm reading this, I would expect someone to give me sources on the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. Like, what are those things? So if I scroll down, number one actually shows me that source. It says Department of State, Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, 31, uh, 31st of July, 1991, www.state.gov. Okay, so basic information, I have a quote for it, or I have a source for it. I got more stuff right here. I got more stuff right here. Keep on going. And then finally, number five, we have another one. So here's the deal. For National History Day projects, you do not need to use a bunch of sources for like all these different facts and information. You know, when I was a master's student, we tend to like try to oversource, so our professors will like us. Um, for National History Day, this is what I want you to use footnotes for. Every time you use a quote or you mention a piece of evidence that you're using to defend your thesis, you need to put a footnote in. That's it. So again, every single time you have a quote, definitely when you have a quote, and every single time you mention a piece of evidence to prove your thesis you need to put in a footnote, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna use this uh, random one right here, I'll delete it later. Um, but, so I'm, I'm in this thing right here, actually, I'm gonna move my video over here just so you can see it better, okay? So, I'm in this right now, you guys should be able to see file, edit, insert, all that stuff. So, I have now clicked onto this area. So a footnote will always go after the period, so make sure you always have it marked after the period. I'm going to go into insert. I'm then going to click on footnote. And then there it is. Do you see how the footnote automatically turned into a five? Well, that's because it came after a four. So as long as you do this, it's automatically going to do it for you, okay? Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to indent it, which means you're just going to tab it over one. Um, what I do is I just make sure my cursor is right next to the number. So I just moved it so you can kind of see how my cursor right now is moving. And then I'm going to tab it over. So I'm just click tab, and now that footnote is where it needs to be. And I would actually write out the piece of information. I would write out my citation. Very similar to an annotated bibliography citation. Now, here's why this is less fun. The bibliography citation is a different citation than footnotes. I hopefully, hopefully you're groaning, because I groaned the first time too, and I really realized that. So you have to actually learn a different set of rules for footnotes. Good news is, it's the same information, but you just have to organize it differently. I don't have a reason why. I'm sure there is one, but right now, I don't understand it, really. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it. So, 
First thing, I'm going to show you a website that's really easy to use. It's called Western Oregon University. They have this thing called Chicago Style Guide for 17th edition. Here's the deal. I put this in the video description. Please click on it and use it because it's really nice and it really shows you exactly how to lay everything out. Okay? So I'll give you a second to look for that. It's just called, I just called it Western Oregon University. You should be able to click on the link and go to it. Um, going down here is this intro, basic structure. You guys can kind of skip and ignore those things. Right here we have example. Um, you can kind of see where they have their footnote like that. And then it says foot slash endnote. That's all we need to do. So right here you can see how they have it organized. Um, I, you know, again, they're only giving you the basic structure. If you look out here on the left side, see where it says books, journals, magazines. So you can actually do the different kinds of information you have. So for example, if I click on books, it would actually take me to book. And again, we're going to skip all this intro stuff, basic layouts, what we want. So this is the basic layout. We have author, first name, last name. So it's the exact opposite of bibliography, chapter of book, all that stuff. And as you can see, all this information right here is what the footnote should look like. And you have a bunch of other little things you can do. But as long as you're adding them in there, that's all that really matters. I'm just going to copy and paste it in there to show you what it could look like. Paste. Maybe. There it goes. That's it. So you can see it says Dave Shields. The thing about life is one day you'll be dead. New York, Alfred A. Not 2008. That's a footnote. So that footnote would tell me then, so say like if I'm your reader, so if, I, if we're doing national history, we're doing judging. If I'm looking at this number five, like, oh, that's curious. I want to know more about that research. I would scroll down. I would look at this. I'm like, oh, he got this from David Shields. And this way your judges can know that for a fact that, yes, you have done the research. They could go track your research if they want to. So it really is just a, a very helpful way of kind of learning more about it. So that's footnotes. Um, take your time with them. They are going to be very time consuming. You know, if you're writing an essay, you don't have to write a process paper because of how time consuming this can be. So, you know, take that to heart, I guess. Um, if you have any questions, though, please let me know. You are going to need quite a few footnotes. I would say for an eight page paper, um, my expectation would be at least, or I would say 25 footnotes would probably be a good expectation for an eight page paper, 20 to 25. If you go over that, that'd be fine, but you do need to definitely cite every single one of your quotes and you definitely need to cite every single time you've used evidence to back up your thesis. So that's all I got. You guys go ahead and take care. And if you have questions, please let me know. Okay. Bye. Maybe.